So the holidays are supposed to be happy and fun, but let's be real. For a lot of people, the holidays aren't the happiest time of year. It's called the holiday blues, and today we have psychiatrist Dr. Ish Major here to break it all down. Welcome to the show, Dr. Ish. Yeah, and man. Yeah, I, I'm in a festive mood today. Yeah, I <laughs> love it. We all are. I love it. So, Dr. Ish, what's the difference? Let's jump right in between the holiday blues and actual seasonal depression. So, Jeff, that's a good question. It's a huge difference, right? The holiday blues are those melancholy feelings we can all get sometimes around the holidays when we start to do our end of year emotional inventory. We start to check those receipts, and surprisingly, we start to realize that math ain't math. Right? <laughs> those are the holiday blues because it's natural to do that end of year inventory where we catalog everything that went wrong and everything that went right. But our brain's tendency is to dismiss the things that went right, and so we focus on the other stuff. Now, this this is very different from seasonal depression, which is clinical depression. We call it seasonal affective disorder. So much more serious. You have extreme levels of tiredness and fatigue. You just feel exhausted. You feel super irritable. It starts and stops at the same time every year in the fall, carries you through to the winter. The good news is it usually goes away when the sun comes back out. But if it doesn't, maybe time to talk to a professional. Yeah. So let's talk about warning signs. What are some that you or someone you know might be struggling with this? Yeah, Eric, so that's, when I think about what are those warning signs, I think about what the thing is that people are trying to hide, mm. right? We don't like people to see our pain. We don't like people to see our shame. And so we just want to isolate and tuck it away in the corner. So for me, the biggest warning sign, biggest red flag is isolation. Mm. They just don't want to be around. Mm -hmm. uh, now that's followed up with extra irritability, extra moodiness, a little extra kick in the eggnog, mm. <laughs> right? Mm. Those chemical coping skills. Yeah. So if that's going on, if those patterns are happening with you or somebody you, you love, then you know it may be time to be concerned. And I think it's important, I just was watching a friend who said she lost one to someone who unalived themselves, and I just wanna say, keep, keep asking and keep checking in on friends, even if you think you've done enough, you might not have, because there's this right. constant message doc about how the holidays are the happiest time of the year. And I, I wondered if you could explain how that actually can increase the stress. It can, right? So that's such an important point. First of all, check on your happy friends because those are the ones who need you the most. Totally. And also nothing, nothing makes you more of everything that you don't have by being constantly bombarded with these images of everything that you should have. Right. And during the holiday, just right, we just can't get away of it. That's the irony of holiday stress. I call it this Disney distortion when the fantasy of how we think life should be runs smack dab into our walking dead reality of how yeah. it is, right? Yeah. It's catastrophic thinking. The good news is neither one of those things are true, right? Life is happening somewhere in the middle. It's not perfect, but it's certainly not a zombie apocalypse and it's all okay. Wow. Well, I mean, so I wanna bring all this interview together and ask you, is it possible to love the holidays, but then still also suffer from the holiday blues? Oh, Al, you spot on now, right? Two things can be true. Yep. I can love the holidays, right. but hate how they help me feel sometimes, right? I can love this idea of togetherness, but really, really not like the people I need to get together with. <laughs> <laughs> I can, right? I can love the idea of giving gifts, but hate hey, that currently my bank account yep. might not be set up for buying gifts, right? All of these things are okay. You've got to allow yourself the grace to feel all the feels during the holiday season, right? It's the good and the bad. Beautifully stated. Right. And we only have about a minute left, but please let us know, let our viewers know, how can people manage those holiday blues? All right, cool. So here's some really, really great tips. The number one thing is this. You get to run your holidays, they don't get to run you. So the best gift you can give this holiday season is the gift of permission. Give yourself permission to rewrite your holiday narrative in the way that feels good to you. Give yourself permission to continue those routines that feel good to you. Give yourself permission to set boundaries with people mm -hmm. that don't feel good for you, mm -hmm. right? One of the coolest things you can do is understand that everybody's not all that okay, right? And so what you can do is just insert some random acts of kindness into your routine for yourself and for others, and That's it can go idea. a long way. Could be the thing that changes somebody's whole season. Oh, That's great advice, yes. Dr. Ish. Thank you uh, so much for joining us today. And DBL Nation, you can learn more about him at drishmajor.com. Thank you. Happy holidays. We'll be right back. Thanks, Doc. Yes, bye-bye.